Good morning. Happy Thursday. Uh, okay. So, um, just as a quick note, I was looking at our schedule and I know it looks like we're a little bit behind, but honestly, chapter one usually takes me a long time to get through. Um, thus, it takes us a long time to get through. Um, so, I'm not too worried about it. I'll adjust the schedule and adjust the due dates and stuff. So, so don't worry about that. Um, we're just going to take our time through this stuff because it is so important that we have a good foundation. So, um, morning. All right. So let's see here. Uh, we got into section 1.2 last day. Uh, which we talked about exponents and I'm just, I, um, I try to write myself little notes here um, for things that I should remember to tell you guys, but I think we're all, we're all squared up on the admin side, I think. So um, I'm pretty sure. Anyways, maybe it'll come to me uh, if there's anything I need to tell you guys about, but uh, I think we're pretty good. You've got some assignments that I think are due on Friday, right? Tomorrow at midnight. Um, so make sure you uh, are on WebAssign and doing those. Okay. And the free trial, you've still got until Tuesday next week. So uh, let's just start with a little bit of review. Uh, just a little bit, because it was just on Tuesday. So we don't need, you know, we don't need to do Tuesday all over again. Uh, but we finished talking about uh, absolute value. Um, and that we use them to find the distance between two points AB. Why do I always do BA? Uh, the distance between AB is the absolute value of B minus A, right? So we use the absolute value function, which essentially just drops the negative. Right, there's a little bit more going on, but um, uh, you can just drop the negative, right? Um, and so, yeah, B minus A is the distance between A and B, but then if you take the absolute value, then um, you'll have the actual distance between two points. So to find the distance between two points, between A and B, I'll clarify. Uh, and then we talked about uh, exponent laws. Let me just, uh, so uh, we talked about, okay, if you have a negative exponent, it actually uh, brings it down to the denominator, or if you want to bring something up to the numerator from the denominator, then you would make that exponent negative. And we'll do a, a question for review. Uh, but we also talked about scientific notation briefly, which is, uh, it's used more in kind of chemistry, biology, any, any other science, uh, physics, where um, you have to talk about really, really large numbers or really, really small numbers. Uh, so when they get kind of out of hand, we use scientific notation. Um, yeah, astronomy for sure. When you're talking about those distances, uh, presumably uh, distances or even sizes, right, then you're using scientific notation. So as soon as you're talking about something really, really big or really, really small, um, scientific notation is the way to go. And it does use that exponent, uh, the exponent laws. So anyways, um, then let's go and do, I'm gonna nab an example. We'll do an example as review. Uh, and I wanted to do, let's see here, copy. I wanted to do number 39. A, maybe I should underline A. <clears throat> okay. 
because we've got a, a few things going on here, right? We've got that exponent on the outside that we have to bring inside using those exponent laws that we talked about last day, right? So uh, this five, this power of five on the outside gets brought into both the numerator and the denominator in both these cases. Uh, and then we're gonna simplify and um, as much as possible. So let's see here. Uh, I'll put it down here. I think I'll need lots of space. 39a, I'll just write it out here. a to the power of two over b all to the power of five times a to the power of three, b to the power of two over c to the power of three all to the power of three. Okay. So there are a couple of ways that you could, uh, you could do this. Right. If you prefer to bring this b from the denominator upstairs, right, then uh, you would have a to the power of 2 times b to the negative 1. Right? Uh, and then you could bring this c to the power of 3 upstairs. Upstairs, not really proper terminology, but I think, it, um, I think we, we all know what I mean, right? So into the numerator. So uh, you can bring this c to the power of 3 upstairs. And then you can bring this 3 onto each of the terms. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this exponent inside first, okay? but like I said, there are lots of options. So uh, as long as we end up at the same, in the same place at the end, then what you've done is, is likely correct. Uh, if you ever need me to check to make sure that if, you know, if you didn't do the same thing that I did, that's fine. Uh, and if you just want me to see if it's legal math, uh, then definitely just send me a picture and I'll have a look and, um, but probably it's fine, right? So um, lots of different ways that you could go about doing this. And I always find with, with math especially, um, it's really hard to memorize steps, right? So whatever comes naturally to you, do that and just kind of uh, practice that and, um, and ingrain that, right? So I'm going to bring these powers inside first. And so remembering that, okay, if I'm multiplying the powers, right, then I have to multiply two times five as my new exponent. So a to the power of 10 over b to the power of five. And I'll keep those in brackets to show that I'm still multiplying these two fractions, even though these brackets aren't actually doing anything. Uh, and then I can bring this three inside. So a to the power of nine, oops, that doesn't look good. A to the power of nine, b to the power of six over c to the power of nine. Okay. <clears throat> so because I'm multiplying fractions here now, Right? So I, I wasn't able to do it until I got rid of these exponents on the outside, but now I'm just multiplying uh, at fractions, which means I can just smush them together, right? So it's just one fraction. So this becomes a to the 10 times a to the nine, which we'll be able to combine, right? Times b to the power of six uh, over b to the power of five, c to the power of nine. Okay. So what I'm going to do, and there are, are a few ways that you can go about doing it, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this b to the power of, b to the power of five times c to the power of nine. I'm going to bring it upstairs to the numerator, right? By making these negative, right? These exponents negative. So what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a to the power of ten times a to the power of nine b to the power of 6 times b to the negative 5 times c to the negative 9. Just so I can have everything on the same playing field. Now what you'll notice is I actually uh, added a step and that's okay. Uh, for me, I always like to just bring everything up to the same level, simplify and then get rid of my negative exponents, which was part of the instructions here. Uh, simplify each expression and eliminate any negative exponents. So um, we'll do that at the very end. Okay. Um, so now, 
as long as I have the same base, I can combine the exponents by adding them, right? So another exponent law, um, you should be able to do all of these problems for sure, right? So no hiccups here, just kind of uh, being fluent with those exponent laws, uh, it's really gonna pay off. So this becomes a to the power of 10 plus nine. And if you just wanted to skip straight to 19, that's totally fine. Uh, times b to the power of six, technically plus negative five and then times c to the negative nine. <clears throat> Simplifying here, a to the power of 19, b to the power of one, which I'm just gonna uh, skip the one, right? Six minus five is one. And then c to the negative nine. This c, I haven't actually done anything with, right? I just, I moved it upstairs and then it just kind of hung out. So that's what I meant by, I kind of added a step there by bringing it upstairs, but I just think it's it's nice to have them all on the same line. Um, to eliminate the negative exponent, right? I have to bring this c to the power of nine downstairs. So I have a to the 19 times b divided by c to the power of nine. Good. So really practice those exponent laws and we're gonna keep working with exponent laws. We're gonna make it a little bit harder uh, with, um, with radicals, radicals. Um, but the rules stay the same. So that's the end of our review. All right, so let's talk about um, roots, right? So if you had to take the 13th root of something and you're trying on your calculator, you can't find uh, the 13th root button because it doesn't exist. Uh, but the trick that we use, right, in order to, to calculate any root on our calculator, We use the trick that the, now I'm gonna get a little bit weird here, the nth root of a, so using variables, uh, the nth root, right? That's just making room for any root. Uh, the nth root of a is the same thing as a to the power of one over n, okay? So, for example, if I want to take the 13th root and remember to take to show that you're taking the 13th root, you kind of put the 13 inside the hook. I didn't do a very good job here, but uh, as long as you're kind of showing that the, the root or the, the nth root is going inside the hook, uh, then that's good. So then uh, let's say the 14th. 13th root of four on your calculator, if you had to do this, then you would have to do four to the power of one over 13, okay? And I need you to be really careful when you're doing that on your calculator because you wanna make sure that the one over 13 is all in the power, right? So you can use brackets in your calculator. I'll show you here. Uh, let's use this calculator. Oh. Clear, clear all. All right, so if I wanna do four to the power of anything, you've got this A to the power of B button, which should lift you up to the, the power, right? The exponent. And then up here, I'm gonna try doing one divided by 13 just to see if it hangs, if it's all upstairs and it looks like it's all staying in the power. So that's good. Right. Depending on what calculator you have, you might want to just make sure that it stays in the power uh, because otherwise it becomes four to the power of one divided by three. That's four over 13, which is not what you want to do. Right. So um, so here we have the 13th root of four is one point one one two five three one four seven six 
and it keeps going, right? We, we understand that it keeps going. So this is an approximate answer. The exact answer is the 13th root of four. Okay. So, uh, so we use this, right? We use the fact that we can rewrite roots as exponents, right? So therefore, we can rewrite radicals, right, or roots, if you prefer, as exponents. Okay. So we're going to use that now, right? We talked about exponent laws, so we know how these exponents behave, right, especially if I've got multiple uh, radicals or multiple roots, then I can convert those roots into exponents, and then I can deal with them using exponent laws, which we just established last day. So uh, let's bring some of this stuff in here. So what it also means is if you have um, if you have something that's equal to this root, right? To undo a root, you can raise it to the power of n. So to undo uh, an nth root, right? Then you can raise both sides to the power of n. Okay? And we'll deal with that later as it comes up, but, um, but that's good to keep in mind, right? To undo a square root, you have to square both sides. The square root is kind of our go-to root, of course. Um, so let's talk about the properties of just any root. And just remember, right, roots are just exponents, okay? So remember, roots are just exponents. Because, so if we have a look at property number one here, property number one says that if you have the nth root of AB, if we add that middle, uh, middle ground of, okay, I'm going to rewrite that nth root as a power of one over n, well, that's going to be A times B to the one over n, right? By the exponent laws, I can bring this power of 1 over n inside, but I have to bring it on to each a and b, right? And so this becomes a to the 1 over n, b to the 1 over n, okay? Which, in turn, you can rewrite as the nth root of a times the nth root of b, right? So, for practice, just ignore, um, uh, you can still do five, but it's a little bit tricky with the absolute value here. But all it's saying is if you take the nth root of something to the power of n, it's going to be the positive uh, value of a, okay? Um, if n is even. If n is odd, then uh, it'll stay a. Uh, kind of ignore four and five. But uh, what would be a really good exercise is do two and three the same way that we did here. So change two and three into uh, exponents and then manipulate those exponents to see, to make sure that you end up in the same place, right? As an exercise and I mean, I'm not going to check it or anything, but um, do the same for two and and three. Okay, just convert them into exponents, and then just kind of get used to working with those exponents. Okay, good. I think I had. Now let's see here. Uh, okay, so we've got a couple of examples there. Uh, let me go back up here and just kind of check, check things out. 
Uh, so you can do all of those ones on the first page. We were not going to do them. We're going to do something a little bit harder. Uh, let's do this one. So I'm grabbing 45 uh, to 48. Okay. So now we want to simplify this expression. Okay. And uh, assume that we're talking about positive real numbers. You can just ignore that because it just gets hard if you're talking about negative numbers. Um, but for here, right, we can just go ahead. And the first thing you're going to do if you have to simplify something like this, right, uh, maybe I'll do, uh, let's do, let's do, let's do, let's do. Um, Let's do 47B. And then I also want to do 48B. Okay. So 47B is the third root of A squared times B times the third root of 64A to the 4 times B. And we're just told to simplify this expression. Okay. So what I need to do is the first thing I need to do is, uh, well, I can simplify things inside here, but uh, there's nothing for me to simplify. So that's OK. Uh, so my next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite these roots as exponents. right? So I'm going to put one over three as the exponent on each of these lumps. So I've got a to the power of two times b to the power of one over three times 64, a to the power of four times b to the power of one over three. Now I'm gonna give you just uh, two minutes to try to simplify this, right? And then uh, if you have time, Go ahead and try 48b as well and see where you get to um, because it's kind of uh, low stakes, right? We're going to go through them anyways, but um, so I'll just pause it here for two minutes, let you work on those. So let's see where we, where we got to. So what I'm going to do is, uh, so here I, I, can, I set you up to get started and then here, kind of a little bit harder, you have to do the first step on your own. All right, so first thing I have to remember is if I'm going to bring this power or this exponent inside, I can use power too, um, then I have to put it on each of the terms inside, right? You don't want to forget one because uh, that'll make a real mess. So a to the power of two and then divided by three. Technically, it's two times one over three, but remember, uh, for fractions, right, two I can rewrite as two over one, okay, and then times one over three, well, it just becomes two over three. So just remember that, okay, if you've got a whole number times a fraction, you can just smush those together and say two divided by three. Times b to the one over three, okay. and I'm going to keep these brackets though they're not going to do anything anymore, right? Because I'm just multiplying all the way across here. So I don't have to um, expand or anything, right? But uh, for me, it's nice to keep track of, OK, where did these numbers come from? And where did these numbers come from um, until I'm ready to combine them? So I'm going to keep brackets, even though they're not doing anything. So 64 to the power of 1 over 3 a to the 4 divided by 3 and b to the 1 divided by 3. Okay. Now, I'm tempted to see uh, if 64 to the 1 over 3, so the third root of 64, uh, works out to a nice number. I suspect it does, so let's give it a go. Um, if it doesn't, just leave it as 64 to the power of 1 over 3. So we've got 64 to the power of 1 divided by 3 works up to four. So you know what? I'm going to simplify that. I'm going to rewrite it as just four. Okay. 
But like I said, if it didn't simplify to something nice, just leave it as the third root of 64. Okay. So this becomes a to the two over three. Okay. What I'm going to do in kind of a combined move here is I'm going to combine all my, in fact, you know what, we just found that 64 to the one over three is four. So I'm going to bring that out front. Pretty typical to want to have uh, just numbers and coefficients out front and then our variables afterwards. Order doesn't matter when you're multiplying, but it just makes it look nice. Then I'm going to collect my a powers, a to the two over three times a to the four over three and then times b to the one over three plus, or sorry, skipped a step, times b to the one over three. And what you want to do is you just want to make sure that you've got all the, um, all the terms moved down, right? So one thing you can do is just count them one, two, three, four, five. And then on the bottom, I have one, two, three, four, five. So feeling pretty good. Sometimes if I really want to make sure that I got them all, uh, you can cross them out lightly, right? Just to show, okay, I've moved that one down, especially when we're rearranging. Okay, so now, right, I've got the same base. So I've got uh, these like terms here. Okay. If you have the same base, then you can combine them by adding the exponents. Remembering, so here we've got kind of a, a mashup of everything we've done so far, right? If you're adding exponent or adding fractions, rather, you have to have a common denominator. In this case, we do, it's three, right? And so we're safe, but it is something that you have to check. So here, let's see, this becomes four times a to the two over three plus four over three times b to the one over three plus one over three. Need common denominators. add fractions, right? That's just a note and we do, so that's good. So we can have, and maybe I'll bump it down so I can write it nice and big. A, so four times a to the power of two plus four is six divided by three, which I can simplify, but I am gonna show six over three first times b to the power of one plus one is two divided by three, which becomes four times a to the power of two and b, oops, to the power of two over three is gonna stay a fraction. Now to take it one step further, I can't remember, oh yeah. Um, I'm actually gonna rewrite this the b to the power of two over three oh, I picked a long one. Uh, b to the power of two over three is the same thing as b to the power of two times one over three, right? Which is the same thing as b to the power of two all times one over three, which is kind of where we started which is the third root of b to the power of two. So being able to move from these fractional exponents to roots and back again um, is going to be really, really useful, right? And so I'm gonna rewrite this as, so this becomes four times a squared times the third root of b squared. Good. Kind of tricky, right? but just remembering um, those exponent laws, they're really going to pay off. Right? So let's do uh, 48b, the third root of the square root of 64 times x to the power of 6. Say that out loud, so I'm trying to remember it here. 
the third root of the square root the third root of the square root of 64 and then I lost it times x to the power of six. Okay. So what we want to do here, right? If you had a chance to uh, to try it on your own, right? You want to rewrite these roots as exponents, making sure that you um, go from the outside or sorry, from the inside out. Okay, so you want to go from 64 to the x to the power of six. Now it doesn't really matter, but it, that's how we're going to do it um, later. So just start from the inside and just kind of blossom your way out. So this becomes the third root of 64 times x to the sixth to the power of one half, right? The square root is the one where we don't have to write anything in the hook. So now I can take all of this, including the power of one half, and I uh, raise it to the power of one over three. So this becomes a bracket, bracket, 64x to the sixth to the one half, and then to the power of one over three. By the exponent laws, right, if I've got these powers on the outside, uh, a power times a power, I can just multiply across. Multiplying fractions, one times one, two times three, so one over six. So I have 64 times x to the sixth to the one over two times one over three. Just to show, uh, but if you went straight to the power of one over six, that's totally fine. 64x to the 6 to the power of 1 over 6. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that 1 over 6 inside. So now we're back to uh, kind of a simpler problem. But the, the tricky part was figuring out how to combine those exponents. Right. So now I have 64 to the 1 over 6. Again, I'm going to check on my calculator to see if it becomes an easy number. Um, and if it does, I'm going to use that. If not, I'm just going to leave it. Uh, x to the power of 6 times 1 over 6. Okay. So now here, I'm taking the sixth root of something to the power of 6. So that's going to go away because 6 over 6 is just 1, so x to the power of 1. So that's how those um, how we cancel roots, right, is by raising them to the power of six or to undo powers, we take the root. Uh, so let's try 64 to the one over six on the calculator. 64 to the power of one divided by six becomes a nice easy two. Uh, so that's great. So I'm going to use that times x to the power of one, right? Six times one over six is one, or if you prefer, just becomes two x. There are a few different ways that you could have gone about this, right? So you don't have to do it my way. This is just one of the ways, right? You could have uh, brought this power of one half inside immediately to get rid of it, and then taken it to the power of one over three. So you could do it in a, in a two-step process. Uh, that's totally fine, right? So just play around with those problems that I've given you because you have the solutions, right? So, um, so just kind of make sure that it's sticking and making sense. All right, good. So let's see here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave you these, but just remember the exponents, the exponent laws only uh, distribute over multiplication and division. Right, so when you have something like this, right, four times the root of 18 r times t to the three, 
um, plus uh, five times the square root of 32 r to the three t to the five, you can only bring that square root onto uh, each of the terms. You're not able to combine them. Same thing here, you can't split that root over the two terms because it's gonna be different. So just play around with those, try these problems um, and just remember, you can only split up exponents um, if you're multiplying or dividing. Okay, so addition, subtraction, no go. Okay. So I'm going to bring this in, even though we just used it already. So here, right, if you have an exponent m over n, uh, can we do 53b? You got it. Always up for requests. Uh, let's put it down here on its own page here. 53b. Okay. So, uh, mm, okay. 53b is the square root of 36x squared plus 36y squared. Okay. It might be tempting to bring this square root and, and break it open, but it doesn't work that way, right? And so we have to deal with this uh, inside first, and then we'll be able to, um, to work with uh, with the square root. So one thing that I am noticing is that I have this common common factor of 36, right? So I'm going to extract that to uh, kind of outside but inside the square root. So I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of 36. Oops. I'm trying to write 63. That's wrong. 36 times x squared plus y squared. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, X squared plus Y squared, can I factor it? It's kind of cheating because we haven't talked about, we haven't talked about not even a special product. Uh, okay. I don't have the solutions, but um, what, what I'm going to do, and I might only be halfway there, is, uh, okay, so now I'm multiplying here. So I've got 36 times x squared plus y squared. So what I can do is I can rewrite this as 30, the root of 36 times the root of x squared plus y squared. So the square root of 36, I know I can simplify to six, and the square root of x squared plus y squared, I'm tempted to just leave it as the square root of x squared plus y squared. But if you have the solutions available, let's see here. Oh, that's from a different class. Here we go. Uh, 1.2. Just because I want to make sure. Hmm. Okay, yeah. So it is just leaving. Uh, only because we haven't talked about how to uh, deal with x squared plus y squared, how to factor it out. There's nothing really you can do. So, um, we did it, right? But you want to get something 
uh, you want to pull out a, fa a, a common factor of 36. Yeah, so this one was kind of womp womp. It looks like you're going to get further, but you actually don't. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Good. And also, phew. I'm not missing anything. It's like, hey, I'm not going to get very far with this. That's OK. Uh, good, 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 good. So let's see here. So definitely try these, right? Uh, you might come across what I just did here and say, oh, I'm not going to get very far. That's OK. Um, all right. So let's try one of these bigger ones uh, and then actually, actually, let's try 78B. That looks good. So we're going to do the third route. So the third route is uh, on everything, right? You want to pay attention to what the root is on, uh, but it's on 54 times x squared times y to the fourth divided by 2 to the x to the 5 uh, over or times y. So let's see here. 78b. I'll rewrite it out here. I'm going to do a big square root across two lines here. So I have tons of space. Uh, and then I just put, my hooks tend to get a little sloppy here, but it, that's okay. Uh, and then I'm going to put the three in the hook and then 54 x squared y to the fourth divided by two x to the five times y. Again, there are lots of ways that you can go about solving this, right? We're simplifying this. So you want to simplify the expression and eliminate any negative exponents. Uh, and then just assume that you're dealing with positive numbers because otherwise it gets nasty. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify uh, this fraction, right? Uh, I'm going to simplify it as far as I can. And then I'm going to bring in this third root, which is to the power of 1 over 3. But I don't want to have uh, fractional powers everywhere and then have to deal with that. So I'd rather just deal with these clean powers. Um, and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to uh, first have a look. 54 divided by 2 is probably a, a nice clean number. Right? I don't really do math in my head. So 54 divided by 2, here we go. Mm, that's nice and clean, 27. So, uh, so that's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm able to simplify this. And I'm going to show you why I'm able to simplify this. Because remember when you're multiplying fractions, you just smush them together. But that means you can rewrite uh, a, a big fraction like this as a fraction times a fraction. right? And so that's how we're able to simplify just the numbers and then deal with the variables on their own. So what it looks like is we have, and I'm going to keep this third root on the outside, whether you write it as a power of 1 over 3, wrap it all up in brackets, or the third root, doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as 54 divided by 2 times x squared y to the fourth divided by x to the fifth times y. And then sometimes uh, if I want to make it really clear, right, if some things are not in the square root, then I put a little lip here just to show that, hey, everything inside here is under the square root. Everything outside here is not under the square root. So now, right, it's obvious that we can rewrite this as 27 times this. What I'm also going to do in the next step is I'm going to bring these uh, these uh, variables from the denominator, I'm going to bring them upstairs. So I get the third root of 27. And I guess maybe I only need one line here because I'm bringing everything to the same line. So I get the third root 
of, oops, 27, not 24. Times x to the power of two, y to the power of four, those are untouched. Times x to the negative five, y to the negative one. Okay. Bringing those uh, variables upstairs to the numerator by making them negative. Okay. Then I can collect like terms, right? So uh, because I'm showing all my steps, um, I'm going to move them together first and then collect them, but you don't have to do that step. You can just uh, go from here to here and then um, the kind of second to next step. The third root of 27 times x to the power of 2 times x to the negative 5 times y to the power of 4 times y to the negative 1. Okay, so now if you went straight to the next step, that's fine. Uh, the third root of 27 times x to the 2 plus, technically plus, uh, negative 5, or if you just did 2 minus 5, it's totally fine y to the four plus negative one. I'm showing every step so that you have it uh, and you can kind of follow along, um, but you can take some shortcuts, some shortcuts. I still wanna see some key things, right? I still wanna see that you know to make these exponents negative Right, and that you know to combine the exponents by adding, or if you want to go straight to subtracting, that's fine. So I've got the third root of 27 times x to the negative 3 times y to the power of 3. 4 minus 1 is 3. Okay, I'm not quite done. Right, because I want to simplify as much as possible. So I want to rewrite this third root. Um, and again, there are a couple of ways that you can do it. You can just rewrite the square, or the, sorry, the third root on each of the terms because they're just multiplied inside. Uh, I'm going to go the kind of longer route and do uh, raise it to the power of 1 over 3 and then bring that exponent inside, which is technically what you're doing. Uh, if you're just splitting up the third root on each term anyways. And I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to squish things together a bit here because I want to try to keep it on the same page, which is going to be difficult, I guess. Because I find that these pages, they print so large that um, when I take up every other line, it takes a lot of paper. Uh, okay, so I'm going to rewrite it as the exponent. So 27x to the negative 3 times y to the power of 3 to the power of 1 over 3. Now I can bring in this exponent because I'm just multiplying across, right? If you're multiplying or dividing, you're allowed to bring it inside. Otherwise, no, you can't. So this becomes 27 to the 1 over 3, which again, I'm going to check on my calculator to see if it becomes a nice number. And then x to the negative 3 over 3, and then y to the 3 over 3. Just skipping uh, minor steps there, right? But Hopefully we can, we're okay with that. Uh, so trying 27 to the one over three or the third root of 27. Uh, 27 to the power of one divided by three becomes a nice three. Hey, is that the symbol on the, on the app, the third root of 27? Crazy. We did it. <laughs> Why would they have that symbol if you can't do it on the on their calculator? Anyways, that's weird. Uh, I think it was three. Let me check. Yeah, the answer is three. How wild. 
So the third root of 27 is three. And then I've got three divided by three is just one, but remember the negative, so negative one. And then again, three divided by three is just one. So uh, y to the one. So x to the negative one, y to the one. Eliminating negative exponents. I can move this x to the negative one downstairs. It just becomes over x to the power of one. But the powers of one, I'm just going to uh, skip. So 3y divided by x. There. So I was able to fit it on one page. It's good. Uh, like I said, there are a lot of ways for you to do this. I want you to uh, kind of take a crack at, at uh, these problems and see how you would approach solving it and then check the solutions. And then if there is a discrepancy and you're not sure if you know what you're doing is, is legal math, then check with me. Okay. But usually, um, the way that you do it naturally is the is the easiest way to kind of practice and make stick. So, okay. So, um, this is kind of a more of a of practice using uh, radicals, roots, exponents, right? Um, but we can do something called rationalizing the denominator. And what that just means, or, or putting it into standard form, what it just means is if you have a root um, in the denominator, usually what we want to do, and this is not something that I'm going to enforce, uh, usually what we want to do is we want to eliminate the root from, uh, from the denominator but most often what that means is just moving the root to the numerator. Um, but then you have this kind of nice clean number in the denominator. Um, so if you have a radical in the denominator and it can look kind of nice and, and simple like root A, right? Or if you have something like uh, the nth root of a to the m, right? So something kind of nasty like this, then the steps are a little bit longer. Um, but what you do is you, you use that trick where you multiply by one, okay? Um, so one in this case, let's go back to uh, just the simple case where you have root a in the denominator. So if you want to get rid of the root a, and you're allowed to have roots in the numerator, just you're trying to get rid of them from the denominator. And so what you're gonna do to, to remove this root is the root of a times the root of a is going to be a, right? So, uh, uh, let's see here. Sometimes we want to rationalize the denominator, which means uh, remove any roots from the denominator. Remove any roots from the denominator. So for example, if you have, um, we'll start with one over root A, just like the, the example in the notes, and then I'll do one with actual numbers. Uh, but what you wanna do is you wanna recall that root A times root a, okay? Let's just kind of remember what that means. Uh, eventually, you're just gonna see this and say, oh, it's just a, 
right? Uh, but what it is technically is a to the one half times a to the one half, a to the one half times a to the one half. I've got the same base, right? And then I'm going to add those exponents, which is going to be a to the one half plus one half. I've got that common denominator of two, so I've got two over two, which is just going to be a to the power of one. So from here on out, when you see root a times root a, you're just going to think, oh, OK, well, that's just going to be a, right? And you can convince yourself every time, but um, eventually you're just going to go from here to here. Okay? So what we want to do is if you want to remove this root, the easiest way to do that is to multiply by root a over root a. Remember, you can only multiply by one. multiply by one, I'll put that in kind of quotes, and you let the one be a convenient value of one. So this becomes one over root a times root a over root a, okay? Which is that one. Right, root a over root a is just one. Okay, uh, I guess I should scoot this over so I can, there. There. So this becomes one, to, so now I've got a fraction times a fraction, so I'm allowed to just smush those together. Right, so one times root a is root a, and then root a times root a we just established is a. So now, right, we have now rationalized the denominator, rationalized. the denominator all of a sudden I can't write or spell yikes denominator there right by moving that root from the denominator to the numerator by, and I'll put uh, kind of moving in, in quotes, right? By moving the root from the denominator to the numerator. Okay. So let's say you have something like, uh, let's do an example. Do I have an example here? Okay. Let's do Let's do something kind of nice, 80a to start with. So we've got 12 over the root of three. So you want to put this into standard form or uh, what we've been calling it is just uh, rationalizing the denominator. But when it's in standard form, then we don't have any roots in the denominator. So we've got 80a is 12 over the root of three. Now, what you're going to do, right, is say, okay, well, that's the same thing as 12 over the root of three times one, but instead of writing that one, I'm just gonna skip straight to uh, multiplying by the root of three over the root of three. Notice I just always pick the value that's down here and then I turn it into one, right? Very similar to what we've been doing before, right? 
So uh, I see here I need to get rid of a root three. So then I'm going to multiply by root three. Right? And up here, if I multiply across, I'm just going to be left with 12 times the root of three. There's nothing really uh, to do here. So I'm just going to leave it because at that point, I don't have a, a root in the denominator anymore. So then I'm done, unless uh, something caught my eye, right? 12 divided by three, I can simplify uh, to be four, right? So this becomes four root three, which does not have a root in the denominator. So we're good, okay? If you have uh, kind of a, a weirder root, right? So if you've got a power uh, inside the root as well as, uh, as a root down here, we have to do a little bit more work. And so, um, and it's not obvious, so I'm gonna bring it in. Uh, I'll bring this whole blurb in because I'm gonna need to refer to it. Uh, but the key thing is here, if you have uh, n, the nth root of a to the power of m, and then it is assuming that m is less than n, because otherwise you'd be able to cancel stuff, but just ignore that. Um, then you multiply, and this is going to get weird, by the nth root of a to the n minus m. So it's not going to be this simple situation where just you just say, oh, I want to get rid of a root 3, so I multiply by root 3 over root 3, right? Um, it's a little weirder, right? But uh, to rationalize to rationalize the nth root of a to the m, we multiply by the nth root of a to the n minus m. Okay. So just like we did uh, earlier, what I'm going to do, so just like we did up here where we said, OK, well, the reason this works is because root a times root a becomes a. And that's just going to be true for, for any any number, right? Root three times root three times root three is just three. Okay, so it works. Uh, so let's do the same thing and show that the nth root of a to the power of m times the nth root of a to the power of n minus m uh, gets rid of that root. So here we go. Uh, the nth root of a to the m times the nth root of a to the n minus m. This becomes, I can rewrite this as uh, these as exponents if I want to, or once we're more comfortable with the roots, then we can say, okay, well, if I'm just multiplying the same root, I can put them all under that root. But for now, I'm just going to use the exponents. So a to the m to the 1 over n times uh, a to the n minus m to the 1 over n. Okay. If I have the same exponent, remember that it was the uh, lesser used exponent laws. If I have the same exponent, I can extract that to the outside, right? And so here, what I have is I have a to the power of m times a to the n minus m to the 1 over n. Now I've got the same base, so I can combine these by adding the exponents, keeping in mind that n minus m is one thing. Right? And so this becomes a to the m plus n minus m all to the power of 1 over n. Okay. Once I expand this out, right? m plus n minus m, well, I'm just left with n. So then I have a to the power of n to the power of 1 over n. You can see how this is kind of falling together here. So now I have a to the n over n, which is just going to be a, right? 
So what I'll say here is therefore multiplying by multiplying the nth root of a to the m by the nth root of a to the n minus m eliminates the root. Okay. And I never remember the format of this one. That's why I brought it in here so I can refer to it, right? Um, it just doesn't come naturally to me. So uh, I just always have to, okay, I have to look that up because it's not, it's not obvious. But now we can do something like ADC, right? So uh, let's do ADC. Eight divided by, and now I have to go back, the third root of five squared. Okay. First thing I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna make sure that M is less than N. It's not something that we harped on and it, it will always be true for things that I get you to do, but um, it's just good to, to get in the habit of checking. Okay, so, uh, Two is less than three, so we're fine. So now I'm going to rewrite this as eight over, so rewrite the third root of five squared times, and now I'm going to multiply by, because uh, I've got the third root of five squared, so now I'm going to multiply by the third root of five to the power of three minus two. Okay. And I'm going to write it out as three minus two, even though it simplifies, uh, but just to, to make it really obvious. So times, and I need it in the denominator for sure, the third root of five to the three minus two, but also in the numerator there. Okay. In the numerator, it's just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna simplify the power, right? Five to the three minus two is five to the one. So I'm just gonna write, have the third root of five. Down here, we already saw that it's actually just gonna simplify to a, which in this case is five, right? But let's go through and use the exponent laws to, to really prove it to ourselves. So in the numerator, I've got eight times the third root of five, uh, the five in the root, um, the third root of five, is that what you mean? I don't think the third root of five simplifies to anything nice, but I don't, I'm not sure if that's what you mean. Oh, five times five, you could, um, but you'd still be in the same situation, right? So here you could, you can definitely, yes, uh, rewrite this as five times five, but you'd still want to uh, get rid of the, the third root here, which is what we're doing. So, uh, so I don't think it would really kind of help you, but very good to recognize that, oh, okay, I, I could split this up and make it easier potentially. Good. So now what I've got here is I've got the third root of five squared. So this is all over because I'm multiplying fractions so I can just smush them together. The third root of five squared. So five to the power of two to the one over three times five to the, uh, you know what, I will simplify. Three minus two is one to the one over three. This becomes eight times the third root of five divided by, and then I'm going to have five to the power of two times five to the power of one, all to the one over three, using that same math that we used earlier uh, up here, right? Just with numbers now. 
Uh, five to the power of two times five to the power of one, right? I've got the same base of five. Five to the power of two plus one is three. So I get eight and the third root of five over five to the power of three over three, which is just gonna go away, right? So now I've just, I'm just left with five. So eight to the times the third root of five divided by five. We did it. Okay, good. Uh, let's take a quick, uh, a little break, because I know I, I rode you guys pretty hard. And just so you can kind of uh, maybe work through some of those problems if you want to, or just have some coffee, I don't know. Um, but let's have a break until 9.20. So, welcome back. Uh, let's just delete that. Great. So, put this on a fresh page because we're moving on to the next section, uh, which is uh, section 1.3, which is kind of cryptically called algebraic expressions. Now, that's not very telling. Remember, algebra is uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. And so when we're just dealing with a combination of those, we usually just say algebraic. Uh, and I only mention that because sometimes um, we say these, these terms, but we don't actually know what they really mean. So I find that that's helpful to know what they mean. So algebraic expressions is just any expression. Um, and this is like kind of way deeper, but uh, an expression is something without an equal sign. An equation has an equal sign because it's equal. Uh, so an equation has an equal sign, an expression does not. Uh, that's not important to know, but it, it's kind of fun to know. Uh, so algebraic is just referring to any combination of any combination of addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. So kind of the most basic um, algebraic expression that we can talk about is a polynomial. So let's bring in our little blurb on polynomials here. Oops. And so a polynomial looks like this. And I'll bring in this whole kit and caboodle here. So a polynomial. Okay, is, uh, is our most common algebraic expression. Polynomials are the most common algebraic expressions. It's really just, if you have uh, some coefficient and then one variable of x to different powers. So x to the power of n, x to the n minus one. This is just opening up for any, uh, any power, right? Um, so you've got x to the power of n, x to the n minus one, all the way up to x to the power of one. And then uh, I'll just kind of emphasize that anything to the power of zero, remember, is just one. So uh, so then it becomes x to the power of zero. So it's still there, uh, but it goes away. So it's just a, the coefficient uh, times one, okay? Um, so for example, example, 
4x to the 3 plus 2x squared plus x plus 9 is a polynomial. Okay. So you've got x, 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 and then uh, each x has some unique power, right? So once you've uh, collected like terms and you've simplified, then each x has its own unique power. And there can be cases where, you know, you might not have an x squared, then technically what's going on here is the coefficient would be zero, right? So each of these has a coefficient. Coefficients. Okay. And the highest, so I uh, can't remember if we had the example. I don't think so. Uh, but how we write these is we usually write uh, polynomials with decreasing powers of x. And that is just to highlight what the highest power of x is. So x to the power of 3 is the highest power of x. And so we say that this is a polynomial degree 3. Okay. So this is a polynomial degree 3. Okay. Uh, poly means many, right? Nomial means terms. So uh, here, each lump kind of being added together as a term. Uh, and so uh, a polynomial has just multiple lumps of terms being added together. Okay. Uh, it's kind of, it's not important, but uh, monomials, right, would just have the one term where you have a coefficient and x to the power of something, but they're not being added to other terms, okay? Uh, so, um, that's just kind of the, the etymology of so uh, where the word comes from, which is going to be helpful to, to kind of help you memorize. Um, so notice, uh, let's see here. Notice if you have, let's use the same one, x 4x to the power of 3 plus x plus 9, right? Here, technically you have plus zero x to the power of two. I only mention that because later on when we deal more with polynomials, it's gonna be important to, to see, okay, there's a, so I started x to the power of three, which means I need to have an x to the power of two, an x to the power of one, an x to the power of zero, okay? And so, uh, you just have to add it in with a, a zero in front, right, making it go away. But it's technically, it's still there with a coefficient of zero. So this is the same as 4x to the power of 3 plus 0x to the power of 2 plus x plus 9. And then just remember, technically, or I'll use this color here, times x to the power of zero, but recall anything to the power of zero is one. I shouldn't say zero equals one. Is one, right? Nine times one is nine, so we just ditch it, okay? But it is important to kind of recognize that, okay, we do have all our powers of x here from 3 to 0 in this case. And you can have polynomials of any degree. Um, and you don't necessarily have to list all of them out, right? Some of them could have coefficients of 0, making them kind of go away. Okay. But uh, what we are going to be doing is we're going to start by adding and subtracting polynomials and then quickly work towards multiplying polynomials. And then later on in, uh, I want to say chapter three, we actually start dividing polynomials 
uh, a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Ugh. It's pretty fun, so don't worry. Uh, but we will cover all our bases, so we will know how to manipulate polynomials in all kinds of ways. All right. So uh, <laughs> to add or subtract polynomials, you just need to remember that um, uh, if you're bringing a negative, so especially if you're subtracting, right, then you have to bring that negative inside the brackets. Okay? So uh, uh, to add or subtract polynomials, we must pay attention to the distributive property. Yeah. Which says that uh, A times B plus C is the same as AB plus AC, right? Especially if subtracting Right, so that's the same as having negative one as my a times b plus c, right? Then it becomes negative b minus c, right? So then we have to bring this subtraction inside. Negative is brought onto all terms. I'll do some examples too. To emphasize that, uh, it's a pretty common mistake that I see, so make sure you pay attention to it. Um, let's see here. I'll do let's bring some of these in here. Let's do 19. Wrong color, that's okay. So 19, I'm going to need more room than that, aren't I? Put it down here. 19 says 5x to the 3 plus 4x squared. Oops, that doesn't look like a squared. Uh, minus 3x minus, and then in brackets, x squared plus 7x plus 2. Yeah. So just to talk about the terminology that we just established, right, we've got a, a polynomial, right, because we've got multiple uh, terms with x's, different powers of x here, uh, being added or subtracted. So it's a polynomial. And uh, degree 3 minus a polynomial degree 2, right? just to kind of get used to that terminology. And then noticing that we always write the powers um, in decreasing order. Uh, or always write the powers in decreasing order. Kind of like that. So what this becomes, and I'm going to put my equal sign down here because I ran out of room, uh, and that's okay. The brackets around this first polynomial uh, aren't doing anything, right? It's just to emphasize that here's one polynomial minus another polynomial. Now the brackets around the second polynomial, they are doing something because I have to bring this negative onto each of the three terms, right? So when I write this out, I can uh, remove the brackets from the first polynomial, 5x to the 3 plus 4x squared minus 3x. And then I have to be really careful bringing that negative inside each of these terms here. So minus x squared minus 7x minus 2. Right, just really paying attention to uh, 
uh, to that. Most common mistake I see, and, and it, it'll really mess things up, is uh, you'll remember to put the, the minus on the x squared, but then for some reason you forget to put it on 7x and 2. So then you end up with minus x squared plus 7x plus 2. And you can see that that's really going to mess things up. Right? So you want to make sure that you bring that negative inside onto each of the terms. So then we have <clears throat> now I can collect like terms, right? I've got uh, just the one x to the three. So five x to the three, I have uh, two terms of x squared and I have two terms of x and then I have one constant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rearrange these or if you wanted to just skip to it, that's fine. Um, but I have five x to the three plus four x squared and then minus x squared minus three x minus seven x minus two. Now, whether you want to uh, pull out that common uh, multiple of x squared and then deal with the coefficients, that's fine. Technically, that's what we're doing. But I just go four minus one uh, makes three x squared and then minus three minus seven minus 10 x. So I end up with five x to the three uh, plus three x squared minus 10 x minus two, and then I'm done. <clears throat> to multiply uh, polynomials, right? Again, we need to uh, pay attention to the distributive property, um, but usually we have multiple terms and we already talked about FOIL, right? So it's just kind of a more advanced version of FOIL. We're, we're just expanding things out, okay? So to multiply, um, to multiply polynomials, we use the, uh, the same methods that we use to expand uh, expressions. So to multiply polynomials, we use the same methods as we used earlier in expanding, right? Things like if FOIL makes sense to you, then that's great. Uh, but now we're probably gonna have a couple more terms to deal with. So what you're gonna do, just methodically take each of the first terms and multiply it onto each of the terms in the other polynomial and then move on to the next term, multiply it by each of the terms in, uh, in the second polynomial, so on and so forth. Uh, here, I'm just adding and subtracting. So I'm gonna go find an example that's a little bit better. Let's grab some of these, 47 to 62, copy. So now, right, can I zoom in a little bit here? Uh, all of these, right, you have a term, so you've got a polynomial times a polynomial, right? And so 2x minus 5 is a polynomial, and x squared minus x plus 1 is a polynomial. So for example, if you had to multiply this out, you would have to take 2x times x squared plus 2x times minus x times or plus 2x times 1 and then move on to the second term minus 5 times x squared plus minus 5 times minus x plus minus 5 times 1. So let's go ahead and write that out uh, but I want you to kind of try it on your own too. 2x minus 5 times x squared minus x plus 1. I wanted to keep it on the same so I didn't give myself a lot of room, but what I need to do is I need to take 2x and multiply by each of these terms and then take minus 5 and multiply by each of these terms and then add them all up. So what this becomes is I have 
2x times x squared. Okay? And I'm just going to, uh, in my head, write x times x squared is x to the 3. And if you want to show that that's what you're doing, then that's fine. Um, but we are moving a little bit faster now, so that's why I'm, I'm kind of skipping some steps. And that's OK. Uh, 2x times negative x makes minus 2x squared. And then 2x times plus 1 makes plus 2x. Okay. And then uh, I can't remember if I've told you guys, but if you, uh, if you suspect that you're going to run out of room on this line, what you do to move it to the next line is you do an indent and then uh, continue your uh, addition or subtraction here. And it just shows that, hey, this equal sign isn't quite done yet when you indent it. Uh, so it just makes it look nicer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go from minus 5 times x squared makes minus 5x squared. Right? So notice here I've indented just to show that, OK, this is just a continuation here. Uh, minus 5 times minus x makes plus 5x, right? Negative times a negative makes a positive. And then minus 5 times 1 makes minus 5. Now I'm going to have to collect like terms, right? I've got a, an x to the 3. I've got x squared and x squared, x and x, and then a constant. So I'm going to collect like terms here and do 2x to the 3 minus 2x squared minus 5x squared plus 2x plus 5x minus 5. Okay. So whether you want to deal with just the coefficients or if you want to properly extract that common x squared and then deal with the coefficients, either way, it doesn't matter. Minus 2 minus 5 is uh, minus 7. Right? And then 2 plus 5 is 7. So here I have 2x to the power of 3 minus 7x squared uh, plus 7x minus 5. Good. So as long as you're doing these uh, methodically, Right, so take your, your first term and you multiply it through, you can deal with pretty nasty stuff, right? Like even 61 and 62, where you have uh, multiple terms in here, not just two in the first polynomial, right? 2x plus y minus 3 times 2x plus y plus 3. As long as you're just taking it nice and slow and take each term multiplied by each of the terms in the, in the next polynomial and then moving on and just keep adding them up, um, then you're going to be fine. Okay. So uh, practice those definitely. And let's see here. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. I think just because I, I want to get kind of a little bit further into 1.3, but uh, so remind me, we'll come back and, and do one of these bigger ones, especially if, uh, if you've done them over the weekend and you find, oh, I'd love to go through one of these, then let me know and we can, we can work through it, right? But it's better if you try it on your own first. Uh, and let's see what happens. And you've got the solutions, right? So, so you can always check it. Uh, we've already talked about factoring, but now uh, let's talk about if you have something kind of bigger like this and you have to factor out a common factor. So uh, if you have a polynomial, right, you might be able to factor out common factors that are more than just, uh, you know, maybe maybe a, a number like earlier, we factored out a common 36, right? We might be able to factor out powers of x and y uh, as well. So let's do, uh, first let's do 64, just to kind of get off on the right foot here. 64 
3x to the 4 minus 6x to the 3 minus x squared. If you have to factor this, right, factor out a common factor, what you're going to do is you're going to scan to see uh, if there are any common multiples uh, in the uh, coefficients that you can pull out, right? But also you're going to scan and see, okay, x squared um, is the lowest power of x. Sonia's got it. Um, so you can pull out an x squared because you can rewrite each of these. So you'll always be able to pull out the lowest power of x. We can always factor out the lowest power of x, All right? And the reason for that is because we can rewrite this as 3 times x. So our lowest power of x is x squared here, right? And so I can rewrite x to the power of 4 as x to the power of 2 times x to the power of 2. Right, and convince yourself exponent laws, x to the power of two times x to the power of two, minus six x to the power of two times x to the power of one minus x squared, right? So now it's obvious that we've got this kind of common x to the power of two. Well, don't know what happened here. So now I can pull that to the outside. So I can get x squared, and then I'm going to use nice big square brackets just to emphasize that it's all on the outside. And then I just take everything that wasn't x squared, and I have to uh, assemble it again, just like we did with the factoring earlier, right? 3x squared minus 6x minus 1, right? Keeping in mind that if I pull out this x squared, I still have to represent it by a 1. Good. Uh, inside here, I can do a little bit more, right? Um, I can pull out a common 3 from the 3x squared minus 6x, and I can also pull out a common x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go a little bit further here. Right here, I have a common 3x. So I'm not going to write it out like I did here. This was just to show you where it's all coming from. But I'm going to keep this x squared all on the outside. And then I'm going to have 3x, which is my common 3x. And then what's left over from 3x squared is an x minus 2 and then minus 1. There's nothing really nicer that I could do here, so I'm just going to leave it. Um, but three, no, I don't see anything nicer, so I'm just going to leave it there. But just extracting those, uh, uh, the common factors, give the rest of these a go, and then this is where we'll start. Uh, the next day, we'll start probably with uh, 68 for a review. How about that? All right. Uh, any questions before I let you go? So remember, you have assignments due tomorrow. Make sure you get those done. Um, and then have a good weekend. I'll see you on Tuesday.